opening your movie with fireworks going off in the night sky because fireworks are the goddamn worst. And f you and your fireworks. When you don't want to stand out in a crowd, make sure to dress up like a sleazy private detective from the 1950s, which to be fair is probably what a current sleazy private detective dresses up like as well. Hey! Hey! My purse! Hey! He's got my purse! Hey, buddy! Stop Come on! This woman had to have her purse snatched as part of the villain's plan and no justice will be served on that front. By the end of this movie, Boz won't be the only cop in this city to pursue a criminal into a dark place like f***ing Batman, and the whole plot hinges on that so much so that the sin is the DCEU. Also, what if he just said f*** it and went off and got a funnel cake instead? Waking up perched atop a stepladder hanging by your tongue when you should have fallen and torn that sh out of your mouth while you were unconscious. Hello, Detective Boswick. I want to play a game. The three train is arriving in two minutes. Chloroforming people with such precision that they wake up in time to catch their train. Also, discount Jigsaw Voice is discount. You have one chance to live. It will never really be clear as to whether or not the contestants in this movie are given legitimate chances, or if giving them a sliver of hope is just another part of this sick torture. Like, if no one ever escapes your escape room, is it really an escape room? Or am I... I mean, is he just guilty of kidnapping? Live or die. Make your choice. Here's an example of my previous point. Even if he does choose to live, ripping out his tongue could also cause him to bleed out, potentially. And even if that seems too ridiculous, he could just as easily pass out from the immense pain and still get hit by the train or knock his head on the train tracks. There really is no 100% pathway to living. So this is more of a choice to die or potentially not die. It's not as exciting, is it? Unlike this movie, we won't subject you to more grossness than is necessary. All you need to know is that the dude just went splat and everyone on this train is going to be late to their evening plans and no justice will be served on that front either. This movie introduces the idea of the Book of Saw and all that says to me is there's more potential for reading. That. What you talking about? That movie won award. The comment section for everything wrong with Unforgiven somehow makes its way into the script. But you woke now? The eventual comment section for everything wrong with Insomnia also somehow makes its way into the script. Who the f is nicer than Forrest Gump? The movie introduces Chris Rock by having him work on a tight five for his post spiral HBO stand up special. I want Terrible Gary Oldman impressions. Either every single cop called to the scene bet it all on this one entrance, or there are around 300 cops surrounding this one building and- It's Christmas, you could steal City Hall. Do I look like a f***ing Jamaican nanny? Do I smell like jerk sauce and baby wipes? No, me no want no partner. This was a choice. I got a heat wave going on. We got rolling blackouts. The city is nuts. Stop! Definitely didn't come into this movie thinking Spiral from the Book of Saw would be taking plot points from Predator 2, but here we are. Zeke, I want you to meet detective in training, William Shank. Who has to be partnered up with you to make his run as the new Jigsaw Killer work out. So I'm glad I was able to provide that assistance for detective in training, William Shank, when I had no f***ing clue he was a goddamn serial killer. He was the top of his academy, so don't screw this up. I mean, if he was a B student, you could f*** it up all you want. But unfortunately, this one actually read the laws. Everybody hates Chris. Detective Banks en route to that 1019. Police codes, how do they work? Seriously, because nothing I've found links this one to... Some homeless guy got hit by the three train. What are you doing? This is my wife, Emma. This is my son, Charlie. That doesn't explain why you were putting this picture in the visor of his car, though. Unless it happens to be an important piece of evidence for the audience. But that's just silly. I'm half Italian, trust me. Women do not like him when you call it. Do half Italians have a certain set of skills that make them experts on this specific topic? And do their mothers know that they use that language? I don't say it to their face. It's not like I'm too short. Of course, you don't say it to their faces. You know when to blow the whistle. You know what I'm saying? Is, you know, most crime happens on weekends, holidays. It depends on the crime, so the sin is overgeneralization. One day, your wife will be angry because you couldn't go to her sister's birthday dinner. Sister-in-laws. So, uh, I'm guessing you're divorced. He says as they pass a random officer that Zeke might not want to know about his current life situation. I'm going through a divorce. That's, that's even worse. It's kind of like chemo. It is most definitely f***ing not. This is the life we choose. Highest divorce rate. The profession with the highest divorce rate is actually listed in most studies as bartending. Cops don't even make the top 10, so Zeke is a liar. When you decide to become a cop, you pretty much assured yourself you are gonna die alone. The movie has assured us that we have no idea why Zeke even wants to be a cop anymore. My wife and I are doing this counseling. Counseling? Hey, that's nice. Yeah, my wife the counselor. Apparently catching feelings in that setting is so common there is actually a term for it. However, any rabbit hole I was about to go down about the phenomenon called transference was promptly filled in by this distracting buddy cop banter. You can ride okay. a lot of before dusk. Mm -hmm. Title of the prequel script I sent to Tarantino somehow makes its way into the film. What do we got? 
See for yourself. I know that we're supposed to see that all the cops hate Zeke, but I don't even know why Zeke asked this question. He was already told there was a dead body in the subway. He knew what we got. Whoever this is, is married and wears a Fitbit. Fitbits. These bespoke USB drives are proof to me that revenge requires a lot of skills I don't have. What are you doing? Don't want to f up my computer. Zeke's tragic lack of knowledge about networks. I recognize that building. It's the courthouse. Wonder what gave that away. I would love to see the scene where after Boz is obliterated by the train, Shank comes back and somehow finds the tongue before the train driver gets out and sees him. Actually, scratch that. I do not want to see that scene, but that's mainly because I think it's bullshit. Shank was able to pull this off. Do they have a dead husband emoji? No, but if you send a skull, an eggplant, money with wings, and a smiley face, I'll probably figure it out. F you. No, f you. I'm beginning to think this is a hostile work environment. Some of you are mad I your mother. Some of them are just mad you're so ungracious about it. Yo, where are we going? Pay our respects, put on a suit. Don't they already basically have suits on? And do all cops bring a spare suit to work with them? I've been staring at this shit for five hours. I don't even look at porn that long. Not with that attitude, you won't. Interesting, we have a generally messy table with crumpled papers and Red Bull cans. Based on the evidence, I think we're trying to be led to believe that they have been working hard. But all we've really seen them do is scroll through social media. Don't drain my battery watching Twilight. It's probably not great for your movie that once you mention Twilight, I realize I'd rather be watching that. At least people didn't get tongues mailed to them in Twilight. This picture almost amounts to more screen time than John Kramer was given in Saw the Final Chapter. And yes, I'm still pissed off about that. For Detective Fitch to be captured, he had to be sent to canvas the specific area near the pawn shop and see this camera. Then Fitch has to recognize Benny on this less than high def footage and know exactly where to go to find him. Then Fitch has to be a dick to Zeke. Should we tell Zeke? <laughs> and send Kraus off to track down the drug dealer Spees so he can look for Benny on his own. And it works! Also, Shank manages to orchestrate all this while working the case with Zeke at the station. Hello, Detective Fitch. I want to play a game. But we're not actually going to show you what the game is just yet, because it would make more sense to cut back to it later after the cops realize Fitch is dead, and make it look like Zeke is having a flashback to this happening, even though he would have no knowledge of how the game went down. Can I help you? Are you Marcus Banks? No, I'm his son. Oh, it's a Roni delivery. This delivery guy did not bet this scenario properly at all. For all he knows, he could have just given that food to a complete stranger. And poor Marcus Banks went hungry that night. He's only getting four stars because of this less than perfect handoff. Knew I should have never let him become a cop. Zeke is somehow having a flashback of a conversation between his dad and Angie that he never witnessed. WF Action News here. Are you in? The journalists in this city are as dumb as the cops are corrupt, and none of them are brought to task in this movie. I mean, I guess they didn't find fingerprints on the last box, but could Zeke at least open the box up with a pencil or throw a pair of gloves on just in case? I think this city's crime issue might have less to do with dirty cops and more to do with inept cops. Salvation was offered, but it was declined. This fucker thinks he's Jigsaw. Was that ever a fucking question, Detective O'Brien? Pig scares, the new cat scares with 100% more pig. Not sure where this magical glove came from because it wasn't on Zeke's hand or around the box when he pulled it from the truck. I'm gonna call dispatch and find out who was closest available. And when I do, I'm gonna take this gun and shoot that motherfucker. With the sudden disappearance of Marcus and convenient flashbacks like this, Spiral clearly wants to set Marcus up as a possible suspect. But we know this movie wouldn't make Samuel L. Jackson the killer, because then it might actually have an interesting angle to it. I mean, you might find it interesting unless, of course, you've seen Twisted. Also, never watch Twisted. None of this information appears to have a date or time. It's good for avoiding continuity issues with the other Saw films, but bad for making this footage useful in any way. Survival is simple. Nothing about this contraption is simple. In fact, it's extremely and unnecessarily complicated. Somebody who has it out for the Metro PD? Or maybe just for Fitch. I see we're going to continue to drum up more bullshit tension among the detectives, because if you seriously had the slightest notion that Zeke rigged up a contraption to torture and kill Fitch, you are not going to say that shit to his face. This is some New Jack City shit. New Jack City exists in this world, then that means Chris Rock exists in this world. So why aren't people constantly telling Zeke how much he looks like Pookie? Uh. What the f Zeke banks on this guy still being blinded by this paint bomb long enough for him to run up several flights of stairs. And it works way better than it should have. But why Zeke has a paint bomb on him to begin with is a much more interesting story. Even with the paint in this guy's eyes, I do not believe he wouldn't have hit Zeke or Shank with at least one of those shots. 
When you get tackled this high but still manage to break your leg, I have to send you for not having enough calcium in your diet. Well, what do you think about this whole uh, jigsaw angle? John Kramer didn't target cops. The corpses of Eric Matthews and Daniel Rigg would like to have a word with you, Zeke. Ghost or not, somebody's out there pulling all the strings. So basically you're saying either a ghost or a living human being is killing people, because we already knew that. And you trying to make what you're saying sound more profound isn't f***ing working. Who the hell is this guy? Ex-cop. Partner snitched on him, had to do nine years. Hard time. Why is Zeke not just outright saying, this is Pete Dunleavy, the dirty cop I ratted on, and he went to jail for nine years because of it? Because Shank has to know that Zeke is the person he's referring to when he says partner. So why is Zeke burying the lead? I should have never pulled the trigger. The guy had a family. Right, it's only okay to shoot people without families. We were working under Article 8. Movie wants me to care enough about Article 8 to stick around for its big explanation about it allowing abuse of power. I will, but only because I have to. This station has a Hogwarts door that's a single door on one side and a double door on the other side. I'm calling the bomb squad. We got two dead cops, there's no time. There's no time to have the bomb squad come in and make sure this package is safe. You're gonna have a lot more than two dead cops if you're wrong about this, Angie. Is that f***ing skin? This movie is f***ing gross! And by the end of it, we will understand most of its nonsense, but still have no idea why it was so gross! These assholes keep touching this without gloves! You were head of your class at the police academy. This recording trails off, unlike the others, in the hopes that we would be too distracted by how gross this scene is to notice or flag that little discrepancy as significant. If you ever send me a text this vague, I ain't doing sh You can check out your hunch on your own and let me know the outcome, because f*** you. Angie, get to the bullpen! He's coming for you! We don't see Zeke try to call another cop other than Angie, or even call 911. Movie makes an attempt to play this off later with... How come no one's answering the phone? And it just feels like this movie is lazily trying to get from torture scene to torture scene without acknowledging how preventable most of these deaths have been. Fault fiction. I guess we're supposed to think Shank has a lot of balls for pulling this kill off in the goddamn police precinct, but why would he take this kind of chance on getting caught before he's finished? There's clearly an insane amount of abandoned buildings in this city to use for forcing cops to dismember themselves. The only way to stop yourself from being suffocated is to sever your spinal cord with the blade beneath your neck. How would that even work? Is there a switch under her neck? Does this thing just know when it's severed a spinal cord? Why do games at all if you're gonna make them so convoluted? They were not in the way! An officer was attacked. It's chaos in here. This is not chaos. The conversation seems to be at a low rumble at most. Angie! 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 That was just a diversion to get us out of the precinct! Which is odd because Zeke appears to be the only cop who wasn't at the precinct up until now. When was the last time you saw your father? This morning. Bullshit. What the f Neither of these idiots think Chief Banks isn't a torture machine or dead. They settle on the possibility of him being the killer and fight about it, like idiots. You wanna play games, motherfucker? Alright, I'll play. Having the awesome forethought to have Samuel L. Jackson in your Saw movie, but then only using Samuel L. Jackson the way they use him in this movie. This makes me want to go back and watch Twisted. F***ing Twisted! Also, don't watch Twisted. We all saw this Saw fake out coming a mile away, so I don't see why you saw fit to put this Saw here unless you're winking at the audience. Saw. Hello, Detective Banks. I want to play a game. So Shank is putting Zeke through a test to see if he's willing to let dirty cops be killed when he has the chance to save them? What exactly, and anything we've seen about Zeke up to this point, would make Shank think this was even a possibility? This feels more like it's a Saw movie, so we need some sort of game for the protagonist to play than anything organic to the story being told. There is a way to save him, or you can keep him locked up and throw away the key. Shank says throw away the key to hint that the trash can is where the key is. But since this has more to do with whether or not Zeke would be willing to let Pete live or die, why does it matter if Zeke knows where the key is or not? Trying to fit the square jigsaw into the spiral hole would work just about as well as sticking an iPad in a meth bucket. That's racist. If Zeke feels the need to pull glass out of his arm, then why isn't he taking the same approach to his face? I feel like the movie is doing its best to cram however much of the gross shit it can in these last 10 minutes. Imagine this reveal in a good movie. Actually, you know what? This reveal is terrible and obvious. So just imagine there was a better reveal in a better movie. The day your partner killed my father. The movie is trying to tell me this whole thing has been some kind of revenge scheme. It doesn't account for the fact that most people, no matter how pissed they are, still have an aversion to blood and gore. Part of this guy's plan involved flaying the skin off of a homeless person. That's something much darker than revenge. His father being murdered feels more like the justification for making the ninth movie in a tired franchise, rather than a genuine motivation for justice. After Benny Rice led Boz down the subway tunnels, 
I tattooed my dad's name on his arm. It's weird that you feel like you needed to take the time to become an amazing tattoo artist to sell this long con, but you do you, loony. We're gonna fix the broken department. Thinking you can fix anything with murder. Barely touched his food. Can't imagine why eviscerating people with broken glass and stringing them up so they slowly bleed out would make you lose your appetite. You're not Jigsaw. Does that seem important right now? Your dad's the reason for all of this. Flashback explanation of the villain's motivation. This plan depends entirely on this SWAT team being so obtuse they don't see all the metal sh on cheap banks as soon as they get inside the room. That or they assumed he was in the early stages of building an Iron Man suit. Either way, they're stupid. No one gives chase to the person who is now slowly exiting on the elevator because racism. No! no. Ziggy piggy, ziggy piggy. Me? No! You! You pull a gun on your old man? You out of your fucking mind? I could have killed you. What are you talking about? I got the gun. This ain't no ham on rap, pal. What the hell are you doing? Saving your life. I would have been here sooner, but I was thinking up that ham on ride line. You better be careful with that. Might be a d night out. How many is that? A lot. Are you in? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? Get the f out of here. Come back when you get some money. You got change for a hundred? You seen this man before? I'm afraid I just blew myself. Ghost or not, somebody's out there pulling all the strings. Pull the string! Pull the string! We were working under Article 8. The 8 is our symbol. Don't move! Let's sprinkle some crack on him and get out of here. How come no one's answering the phone? Hands together! 